Hello dentists, how are you today? Uh, I hope you're fine. Today we're going to talk about radiographs in dentistry. We're going to talk about the definition of radiographs and we're going to talk about the types of radiographs and give examples and we're going to talk about radio, how to identify radiolucent areas and radiopaque areas. So let's start with the definition of radiographs or dental x-rays. They are images of your teeth that your dentist uses to evaluate your oral health. And these x-rays are used with low levels of radiation to capture images of the interior of, you, of your teeth and gums. Uh, this can help dentists to identify the problem or help in the diagnosis, like, for example, carried cavities, okay, uh, tooth decay, impacted teeth. We're going to know each, which type is required for each case, okay. So, for example, we have here, uh, this is a radiograph, okay, peri uh, uh, radiograph, okay. So, it shows it shows us uh, the um, enamel, dentin, and then we have the pulp. The enamel and dentin, they are considered to be uh, radio-opaque. Radio-opaque means they are white, okay, white in color and, or light gray. And then we have uh, the pulp here, it looks radiolucent, means it's dark, dark gray or uh, black. Okay, this is cool. This is we call it radiolucent. Okay, this is the word for radiolucency. Okay, then we have the, the root here, it's uh, radio opaque. Okay, let's go to the next. These are the types of dental x rays. We're going to talk about to give examples for periapical uh, radiographs, interproximal, or we call it another word for uh, a bite wing, which is used for detection of interproximal uh, caries. Okay. And then we have panorama, which is used for detection of uh, any abnormalities or uh, uh, submerged uh, uh, submerged lower molars. Okay. And then we have here occlusal. Okay. Then we have cephalometric and CVCT. Okay. Let's go to the next. So we're going to talk about how to differentiate or how to read a radiograph. We have two things. We have to know them very well. Uh, radio opaque and radiolucent substances. Okay, uh, how do uh, what is uh, radio opaque? Radio opaque is when um, it's uh, when we read the radio radiograph. Okay, it uh, the uh, the um, the substance will appear white. Okay, it will appear white. We call it radio opaque. Radiolucent means dark uh, gray or black. Okay, we call it radiolucent. So let's see how does uh, how can we describe radio um, ra so radio epic structures like uh, enamel, dentin, calculus, cal uh, calcification of bone, calculus, pulp stones, metals, and amalgam. All these will appear white or light gray. We call it radio epic structure. So examples of radio epic structures we have to learn them by heart: the enamel, dentin, calculus. Uh, calcification like bone, calculus, uh, pulp stones, okay, also metals uh, like gold uh, and also amalgam will appear radio opaque, so it will appear white, okay, we call it radio opaque. Like for example, can you see here, this is an, um, a, a filling, okay, and then we have here, this is gutta perca, okay, it will appear white in color, okay. We call it radio opaque, okay. And the filling also, if we have amalgam, or so it's uh, we call it, uh, it is, it will appear radio opaque. So periapical radiographs of mandibular left first and second molar showing periapical rare, uh, rarefy, uh, rarefying ostitis, okay, and uh, possible furcation involvement of the second molar. Here we have here this is a furcation involvement, okay. It looks radiolucent, okay, dark. And this is, uh, we call it, uh, rarefying osteitis. Let's look at the next one. Here we have calculus. This is uh, how does the calculus look like. It looks uh, radio opaque. Okay, so this is, can you see here, the enamel is white. Okay, and the dentin also. And then we have, uh, the pulp is radiolucent. Okay, and this is uh, the bone. Okay, and we have, if we have any re uh, resorption, we call it, uh, it will appear radiolucent, okay, if there are any radiolucents and uh, resorption. <clears throat> radiolucent structures like sinuses, cavities, soft tissue, 
pump chamber, canals, non-metallic restorations, and acrylic and silicate, all these will appear radiolucent. Radiolucent means dark gray or black. Okay, so they will. So if you have cavities, it will appear black or dark gray. And uh, soft tissues, pulp chamber, canals, non-metallic restoration, acrylic and silicate, okay, and so on. Bone resorption, okay, it will appear also radiolucent here. Okay, can you see the level of bone is uh, so this means this shows uh, that the, the bone uh, the the teeth are loose okay here uh, there is a lot of resorption in the bone this is a panoramic uh, radiograph this is a panoramic radiograph okay we can see in the panoramic radiograph you can see the nasal septum looks radio opaque and this is the anterior nasal spine also re looks radio opaque also we have here the zygomatic process looks radio opaque and then we have here a uh, submandibular fossa re looks re uh, appears radiolucent genial tubercle and uh, the lingual foramen okay this is uh, how it looks like in the radio in the panorama uh, internal oblique ridge also appears radio opaque here we have the mandibular canal also okay and the, this is the maxillary sinus. This is a radiolucent area showing the maxillary sinus. And maxillary sinus is one of the very important uh, structures in our field because it's really important because we all we it's cons we have to take care while extraction because this may um, uh, lead to uh, the passage of the um, molar into the maxillary sinus we have to take care very we have to take care while we are making extraction so we have to do it slowly and carefully without force excessive force okay this is the zygomatic process okay and this is the anterior nasal, spine, anterior nasal spine and so on so this is a panoramic radiograph you have to know very how to uh, read a very epic radiograph or a panorama all types of uh, radiograph this will help in the diagnosis of the case here will he have this is a peri epical radiograph okay showing a peri epical infection can you see that this is a radiolucent area this is a patient a patient who has he has who has made uh, uh, an end of filling okay this is a gutta perca okay can you see it and after that, he got uh, a periapical infection. Okay. Here also, this is there is a slight periapical infection. Okay, but it looks a little bit light gray. Okay. But in this case, it's well defined. Can you see? It's well defined. Periapical radiograph. Okay. Also here we have here radiolucency, the apex. Also, caries detection and diagnosis is really important. If we have any caries and we don't know, especially in the interproximal, this is really difficult clinically to diagnose interproximal caries. The only way, there are two ways, okay, it's the only, clinically you can use the probe, okay, if there, if you can find any catching, so this means there are, there is a, an interproximal caries, okay, this is used with a probe so if there is any catching of the probe so this means there is a caries at the proximal side of the tooth so if there are no if it's difficult to find you you, you tried so many times and you it's really difficult to detect so the only solution you have to tell the patient to make a bite wing radiograph to in this case it's really easy to find can you see here this we can see this radiolucency this means that this patient has caries in the proximal side on the proximal side okay okay so radiographic methods for diagnosis by twin radiograph is an estimation for the proximal tooth surfaces bef uh, before they are detected clinically okay so detection of incipient lesions at contacts of teeth so can you see here this is an incipient lesion it's at the beginning of the slide at the beginning of the caries okay so you can find you can detect the incipient lesions or incipient caries okay at the beginning 
with uh, a bite wing radiographs. Here, okay, we have this is also incipient proximal lesion, okay, and then we have moderate proximal lesion, okay, and then we have advanced, okay, this is advanced, you can see the radiolucent area very well, okay. Okay, so uh, I hope that uh, today's topic was of interest to you. Uh, I, uh, and uh, please read a lot about this topic because really radiographs are really important in detection of uh, a lot of uh, problems in the, our dentistry. Okay, it will help in solving a lot of uh, problems and. Uh,